So on a problem like this, students usually do not have trouble being able to figure out what f of two is. They usually have trouble when we're trying to figure out what is f of a negative x or what is an f of x plus one. So in this video, that's what I wanna focus on. Again, before we can get to these two, we gotta make sure we understand what exactly does f of two equal when we have this function x squared minus three x plus four. And to be able to understand this, let's kind of go back to like good old days. Let's just say I have an expression, you know, three x plus one. And let's say let x equal a five. So this would be a common problem and that we maybe would start off like with an algebra one or in pre-algebra and would say, you know, three x plus one and let x equal five. And so what that means is you can just replace the five with the x, right? We're allowing this unknown x to have a value of five. Therefore, when I plug a five in for the x, it just looks like this. And so now all we say to simplify this operation or simplify this expression is just make sure you apply or follow the order of operations, right? We're gonna multiply before we add. So in this case, I'll have a three times five, which is 15, plus one is equal to 16. So that would be my final answer for a problem like that. That's really all we're doing when we have a problem like this. We have an expression which is going to be what we call our function, right? This is going to be the equation of our function. This f, remember, is just the name of the function. And x is gonna represent our input value, what we can plug in to our equation. So in this case, we have f of x, right? That's the input variable. And then our expression, x squared minus three x plus four. So when we say like f of two, what we're really saying is like the same thing we said over here. Let x equal two, right? Let the input variable represent as two. All I need to do, if I wanna find the value of my function f for the value of my input value two, I just need to replace x, which is the input variable, for a value of two. And now, again, as I reminded you, just make sure that you follow your order of operations. We're gonna square the two squared. So this is gonna be four. We can actually multiply this. It's not gonna impact it. So you minus six and then plus four. And then, remember, whenever you are simplifying expression with um, addition and subtraction or double subtraction or double addition, just make sure you go from left to right. So four minus six is gonna be negative two. Negative two plus four is going to equal a positive two. So again, what this reads is the value of my function f at two is guess what, is equal to two. A lot of times students like a problem like this because what's usually happening is we have a value of a function, just like we had the value of the expression over here. I have an input value and then I have an output value. Now, I didn't really mean for the output and the input value to be the exact same, but it's okay, they can. Now, what happens here though, is now my input value is another variable. We're not gonna get an actual value like we did over here. But again, the operation or the idea is exactly the same. This is my new input. This is what I'm gonna plug in for x. Notice what I did over here. When I replaced an x with a two, I put parentheses around it. What that did is that reminded me that I am replacing an x with a new input value. Even though this is still an x, I'm still gonna do the exact same thing. When I plug a negative x in for x, I'm gonna put parentheses around it so I can remember to apply the operations correctly. So here's what I want you to see and understand about this, because if you don't use parentheses, this is where you're gonna get the problem wrong. Because what's usually gonna happen is students will not do parentheses around here, and they'll do negative x squared equals a negative x squared. That's not correct. Negative x squared represents negative x times negative x. That's actually gonna give us a positive x. And then over here, a lot of times, sometimes students will forget this and they'll forget to put the negative and they'll just leave this as a negative three x. Oh, this is negative three times a negative x. That's also going to be a positive x plus four. So now my expression here, in this case, is not a value. It's not a number like it was up here because I couldn't replace a number for all these x's. I replaced a negative x. But now my expression is going to be an x squared plus three x plus four. So what about when we have something else? Now we have an x plus a one. So it's kind of like a combination here of a number and a variable. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the exact same thing. Just plug it in. You're gonna replace x with an x plus one. Now here though, we need to be even more careful with our parentheses because right, negative x squared represents negative x times negative x. Well, guess what x plus one squared is gonna be? x plus one times x plus one. So now what we need to do is expand this out. And remember you can use FOIL or just you know rewrite it, multiplying if you can. I'm gonna go and do my math a little bit in my head just so you guys can see. And I'm gonna apply distributive property. So all I did was the x plus one squared. Again, it's not x squared plus one squared. Don't do that. Actually, I multiplied it out. I did a, let me actually just write this out. x plus one quine squared. Okay, so that's what I did over there. Just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, now what I need to do is just combine my like terms. So I can combine these x's and then I can combine these numbers. So therefore I'm gonna have a final answer here of an x squared minus x plus two. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video gave you some value in being able to evaluate functions for either a number or a variable expression. And if it did give you some value, then I know you're gonna find some value in my next video.